Underground Bunker. This is your proprietor. Tuesday lunch break. Not enough to write about for a lunch break for you, so I thought I'd come out and explain a little bit about what happened this morning. It was a pretty fun scene. We're on uh, day two of deliberations for the newly constituted jury after coming back from the Thanksgiving break at the Danny Madison trial here in Los Angeles. Bright, sunny day here in LA. And uh, you know, if you were, saw our reports yesterday, we had a couple of jurors test positive for COVID on Sunday. They were replaced by alternates. And the defense objected, as it always does, to anything that judge wants to do with the jury. But what surprised us yesterday was that he wasn't objecting so much to that immediate issue of the ill jurors. He was object. He was still objecting to how she handled the Thanksgiving break. And if you remember from what I said yesterday, he basically accused her of lying saying that, you know, we ch over the break we checked the records and we didn't see any jurors saying that they had to go somewhere on Thanksgiving week. I, I mean, he was essentially accusing her of making up an excuse to not come back last week uh, with the jury. So today, after getting people in place, she wanted to address those concerns. And that's what was happening this morning. Because one of the suggestions he made was, okay, if if there were some jurors that needed to go somewhere Thanksgiving week, why not replace them right away with alternates and come back that Monday? But you can see what a bad idea that would be, because now we're down to only one alternate. But anyway, the first thing she wanted to address was this idea that these jurors did not have Thanksgiving plans and that there was some sort of, uh, you know, lying going on. You, you could tell she was not happy. So what she did was she um, brought up to him that when they were doing voir dire that first week, she was telling jurors she expected this case to be wrapped up by November 18th. So whatever plans they had for Thanksgiving was not an issue at that time. So there's no reason for them to bring up their Thanksgiving plans during voir dire if they didn't think the case was going to go that long. That's the first thing she pointed out. Then she went into the specifics of the five jurors who said they had something on Thanksgiving week. The grandmother, for example, who had eight-year-old twin grandchildren coming in that she needed to take care of. The other people who said they were flying out of town for family gatherings. These were all things, she said, the jury had communicated to her clerk and that because of Cohen's objections, she now had to put these things on the record. And she even offered to put the clerk, Robert Psyche, under oath. Even Cohen knew he couldn't go that far. He immediately said, absolutely not. I don't, we don't need to do that. But then he brought up this case law that, you know, there was some uh, criminal case overturned in California by an appeals court that thought that an 11-day delay and deliberations was too long but she then pointed out it was only three days or, or yeah three days that they missed monday tuesday and wednesday of last week because either way they would have had thanksgiving and the friday off those were court holidays so even though we were not in court for 10 days only three of those were days that we took off because again the jurors had plans not the court and she also made that clear that even though we weren't in court last week, she was there. Her courtroom was officially open last week, even though we were all out of town. She really kind of dressed him down. And at the end, um, he then, trying to save the situation a little bit, said, well, you know, I didn't want to imply that. I was saying that if anybody was lying or anything like that. And she just said to him, yes, you did infer that. So, pretty strong moment for, for Judge Olmedo this morning. And I'm sure Cohen's just trying to build something for a, a possible appeal if Danny's convicted. But, you know, um, 
look, it would have been great if this jury had gotten things done before the Thanksgiving week, but they didn't. They had plans. What else was the judge going to do? She brought them back after a week. Two of them were ill. They were replaced. If you replace jurors during deliberations, you have to start over from scratch. She's done all those things. And now yesterday, it seemed like this new jury had a little more urgency. Today, they're back to taking some early breaks. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what that says. Again, we're always completely in the dark. We're just sitting there waiting. Today, the journalists are out in the hallway watching World Cup matches. So, uh, and then there was that one very funny moment this morning, just before anything started. She was, Judge Almeida was handling a couple other issues uh, with a couple other cases, and there was some, an attorney in there who said to her, uh, Judge, did you see that uh, sketch of you that was on TV last night? And I guess he must have been referring to something that Mona did. Mona's the sketch artist for ABC7. And I didn't see it, but he said that it took 20 years off of you. But you had black lips, like you were goth or something. And she just turned up a smile and said, how'd they know what I look like in college? <laughs> <coughs> that Judge Almeida, man, she's something. Wonderful moment to start the day. So yeah, after that big showdown with Cohen, we're back to just sitting around. Maybe this afternoon we'll have something for you. Don't know, but uh, we'll be in there and we'll let you know anything that happens. From the Clara Shortridge Foltz Criminal Justice Center, this is your proprietor signing off.